Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and in this project video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the perfect gift for any graduate of any age. I'm going to be engraving on this glass the phrase, words of wisdom that can be set out on the party table next to a tray of paper tags where people can write down, of course, words of wisdom that they can put in the glass jar. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss a minute of this video as I guide you through step by step the materials being used, the machine set up, and then creating the project and bringing it all together to present the perfect gift for the graduate. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me in this project video. To get started, let's go over the materials I'll be using in this video. Starting off with the star of the show is this clear glass jar. I prefer to use one that has flat sides on it. I'll set that up there for now. There'll be a little bit of measuring in this project. So for that, I have a steel ruler that has both millimeter and inch and to secure the work material in the work area, I'll be using these. These are red magnetic strips, and I'll be showing you how I use these later on in the video. When engraving a glass jar, if I tried engraving directly onto the clear glass, the laser beam's just gonna go straight through it, so I need to apply something like a masking agent to that glass jar, and my favorite go-to material is black tempera paint. That black tempera paint will intercept and absorb all of that laser energy and then it's going to turn around and transfer it into the glass and that is what's going to create the engraving for me. I love using black tempera paint. It's available at virtually every hobby store and most hardware stores, making it very accessible for everyone. There's a number of ways of applying the black temper paint to the glass jar. My preferred method is using this, an airbrush kit. And to make sure that that paint sprays out evenly and consistently, I will reduce that temper paint with alcohol. I'll be using a mixture of 50% alcohol and 50% black temper paint. And don't worry if you don't have an airbrush, you can certainly substitute that with a foam brush. Lastly, I'll need some color or tinted paper for people to write down their phrases of wisdom to place into the glass jar. With the project materials covered, it's time to check out the machine setup. And for this project, I'm using the X-Tool D1 10 watt laser machine. This 10 watt laser module is going to offer plenty of power and speed to quickly create this glass engraving project. We'll note that in the front I have two leg extensions installed. Underneath the machine I have the X-Tool Magnetic Honeycomb. And the really cool thing about this honeycomb is the fact that it is magnetic. And if you've watched any of my other project videos, you know that I always like to secure my work material into the work area. And for that, that's where I like to use these red magnetic strips that they easily adhere down to the honeycomb base. It's time to start the project. Before I connect the machine up to the computer and before I apply the temper paint to the jar, I like to place the work material in the work bed area and get it boxed in with those magnetic strips so that I know that it's perfectly aligned to the frame and it's leveled out correctly. I'll also set the focus at this time too. I'll place several of those magnetic strips in there and to make sure that everything is squared up to the machine, I'm going to use this flat straight board. I'll place that against the back of the gantry frame rail and I'll simply slide this forward until it hits very squarely on the top of the jar. I have that all set and I can move the frame back a little bit and continuing boxing in this glass jar. Now is a great opportunity to measure the front of the glass of the jar that I'll be engraving. I wanna know the width and the height 
I'll jot that down on a yellow post-it note. And when I go into Lightburn software, I'm going to draw that size of a box. And then I'll know that all the graphics that I create will need to fit inside of that box. Next, I'll wipe down the jar on the outside and the inside with some denatured alcohol to remove any sticker residue and any fingerprints. After that, the jar will be ready for tempera paint. This jar is all prepped for paint. I have the backdrop is an old cardboard box that I've cut up, it works perfectly. The airbrush is all set. I have the glass jar on the bottom here is half paint, half denatured alcohol. And I have the air pressure going up to my airbrush at about 30 PSI. And this works perfectly for my airbrush setup. The first coat of paint that I'll put on is just going to be a light dusting so that additional layers of paint can adhere to the glass. Again, that first coat, super light. I'm gonna give that a minute just to dry off. The first coat dried very quickly and I could apply some more layers of paint. I'll keep applying the paint until I have a nice even coat of paint across the jar. Three coats of that black temper paint was all I needed on this jar and I'm ready to place it back in the work area. Next up, let's take a look at the graphics that I have set up in Lightburn software. In Lightburn software, I have this blue box highlighted and we'll see that I have some measurements that I've already typed in for the width and the height. That matches the front face of the glass jar. And this is what I was talking about before. Any graphics that I put on this page here, I wanna make sure that they fit well within this blue border. And this blue box that I have drawn, I have that on layer T2. This is a tool layer that is used as reference in Lightburn software. This is a layer that will not cut or engrave and it's used exactly for this for layouts and alignments. Let's look at the graphics I have set up for this project. Here I've got some artwork across the top, the phrase words of wisdom for Greg, class of 2023. And then I took that same graphic on the top and I mirrored it and placed it on the bottom. And we'll see that I'm safely within this blue border. Let's take a closer look at the settings that I'll be using. I'll double click this layer here and that brings up this sub menu where I have a speed of 30 millimeters per second, a maximum power of 90%. I have bi-directional fill is on, over scanning is on, and my lines per inch is set to just shy of 300. This looks good. I'm ready to grab some safety glasses and hit the start button. The engraving just finished up. I can't wait to check this out and this looks absolutely perfect. Let's take a closer look before I clean this jar off. This looks absolutely amazing. There's so much crisp detail on this. I can't wait to wash the temper paint off to reveal all of the engraving. This is one of the things that I really love about using temper paint for engraving glass is it just has water cleanup. There's no harsh chemicals that I have to worry about disposing of and everything is just water-based with this tempera paint. So even if I splash some of it on my nice clothes, I'm assured that it will easily wash off. And this is looking fantastic. You're gonna love checking this out in just a second here after I'm done drying this all off. The quality and detail of this is absolutely stunning. This looks perfect. I love the way it turned out. You know, each time I do a laser engraving on glass with the X-Tool machine, I'm just always amazed with the quality and level of detail that the machine is able to produce. That words of wisdom jar looks perfect. The only thing missing is something to write some words of wisdom down on to put in the jar. So for this, I found this nice mint green paper 
I'm going to jump back into Lightburn software and do a simple array of some nice rectangular boxes and cut these out on the laser machine. There's no need to cut the paper out with the scissors when we've got this nice laser machine to do that for me. Inside Lightburn, I drew this red box. This red box is eight and a half inches by 11. That of course is the size of the sheet of paper. And what I wanna do is just cut out some smaller sheets of the tags that people can write down the words of wisdom on. And I put that on this black layer, zero, zero. I'm going to highlight this box and rather than have perfectly square corners, I'd like to put a radius on that. And the radius is set at 0.1. And when I move my cursor up to that corner, it'll change into that little crosshairs and that will allow me to click and put a radius on each of these corners. Let me go back and get that one. That one's being tricky. Okay, now with that one square highlighted, I'm going to go over here to create an array of the selected images and that will just automatically duplicate this for me. And as I increase these numbers, we'll see everything automatically pops up and populates in the work area. Let me zoom back a little bit and I think I can fit one more in there and I'll click OK. And to highlight everything that is drawn on the black layer, I can click on the black layer, press and hold shift and click on that layer again. And it now selects absolutely everything and everything now fits inside of that sheet. I can turn that red layer off. I just drew that as a reference. With the graphic and light burn all set to go, I've also reconfigured the Xtool machine by removing all of the leg extensions. I also installed an air assist on the laser module because I am going to be cutting through material. I also used some more of my red magnets. I first started by using that flat board that I had before. And just like when we squared that jar up to the frame of the machine, I did the exact same thing for this first sheet of paper. I then put a magnet on that side that I just squared up the paper and another one along the side. And then I hold the paper in place in opposite corners with more magnets. This allows me to change out the paper as many times as I need to. And as long as I nestle the paper up against these magnets on the side, I'm assured that in light burn, I can keep hitting the start button and make as many paper tags as I need to. Normally on a project, I would have an enclosure over the top of this to capture and evacuate any of the smoke coming off of the paper but to produce these videos for you so that you can see everything that's happening, I don't have the enclosure on, but I encourage you at home following along. If you do have something to mitigate the smoke produced on the project, I encourage you to use it. My graphics set in light burn, the machine setup is correct. The last thing I have to do is just turn on the air assist pump and I'm ready to hit the start button. To finish this project off, I went and grabbed a nice glass bowl. It accents the jar very well, and it also provides a spot to put all of the extra paper tags for guests to write down their words of wisdom for the graduate. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. Doing any number of those things really helps me out. It helps the channel out and it's a great way to connect content like this with viewers like you. Until next time, learn, create, and share.